Hello and welcome everybody. Today we're going to prove the unique factorization theorem. Um, just a quick recap. Um, we all, we proved last time that every number, uh, every natural number can be expressed as a product of primes. I'm going to put that right over here. Uh, right over here. <laughs> um, but uh, now we're going to prove that the product of a prime is unique for every number. So for example, uh, what I'm trying to prove is, you know, let's say 12 equals... 2 times 2 times 3, um, and 2 times 2 times 3 can only equal 12, and 12 can only be um, expressed as 2 times 2 times 3 when it comes to prime factorization. The orientation of these numbers don't really matter, but uh, yeah, we're going to prove that this is a number will have a unique factorization. Okay, uh, let's start with the proof. Um, like last time, it's going to be a proof... Uh, I'm going to prove it by contradiction. Okay. So therefore, I'm going to suppose there exists a number x belong to a set of natural numbers. Um, x is greater than 1. And x can actually be expressed by p1 times p2 times p3 all the way times to pn. So the, these p's are primes. And uh, since, you know, I'm going to, there exists a number, uh, but I'm going to do a contradiction. So x can also be expressed as q1 times q2 times q3 all the way to qn. So all these q's are also primes, and they're different from the p's. So um, I'm just going to actually represent that p from i equals 1 to n are primes and q from i equals 1 to n are primes. Oops. So uh, we know that p1 divides x, right? Since, you know, it's kind of, uh, uh, kind of, it makes sense from here. Uh, p1 divides x, therefore, p1 divides this version of x. So q1 times q2 times q3 all the way to qn, because this equals x. Therefore, p has to divide some qi, is that um, i is i is between 1 to n. So um, if this is the case, p divides at least one of these, right? Okay, so let's say p, oh, oh sorry, if p1 divides qi uh, and both of them are prime, this could only mean p1 equals qi because uh, a prime number is a number that it's only divisible by itself in one and uh, uh, one is not a prime number, so p1 equals q, qi. Uh, just for convenience sake, let's just say p1 equals q1. So let's say the i is over here, we re rearrange it to make it... Uh, Q1 and the Q1 becomes QI. I uh, hope that made sense. Okay. Oh yeah, this is quite quite important because um, we have x equals x. Therefore, P1 times P2 times P3 all the way to Pn equals Q1 times Q2 times Q3 all the way to Qn. And we know P1 equals Q1 from the previous page. We just cancel it. So we have P2 times P3 all the way to Pn equals Q2 times Q3 all the way to Qn. But we're going to repeat what we just did uh, for Q, uh, so I'm sorry, P2, uh, P3, and so on and so forth. That's that the P2 equals Q2, P3 equals Q3, and Pn equals Qn. Okay, then um, thus we get, well, we get, you know, all of them get canceled. Uh, we get pi for any i between 1 and n equals qi for every, uh, for all i equals 1, 2, all the way to n. So um, all these numbers are equal, therefore it, x can only be expressed as 
you know, this P1 all the way to Pn. It uh, can only be expressed in a unique way with only unique factors. Uh, I hope all this made sense. Um, like, uh, actually, yeah, I guess this is enough proof. I'm not going to continue because uh, I guess I verbally explained everything. But, uh, yeah, I hope all this made sense. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. And uh, a like if you want to like and subscribe. I do appreciate that. Um, and until next time, peace out.